Well, as evangelicals, we have two ordinances that we celebrate in the church. The first is the Lord's table, which we celebrated last Sunday. And the second, of course, is baptism. Both of these are outward displays of an inward reality. And both of them look to the past as well as to the future. That's why Paul can say in Romans chapter 6, We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. In the testimony of baptism, the believer is immersed in the water, identifying with Christ and his death and the salvation of their sins that is already accomplished. And then they, are, they, they, they come out of the water, and that symbolizes looking forward to the resurrection that he will enact in all of us, even as he is the first fruits of that glorious resurrection. We had one baptism in the 9 a.m. service and one in the 11 a.m. service. Both of these men are already believers in Christ. And this morning, they're proclaiming their testimony publicly as obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. So this morning, I want to introduce to you Matt Frere. Hi, my name is Matthew Frere, and I am 23 years old. I've been attending City Center Church for just about 18 years now. I was born and raised in a loving Christian family. My parents and family always strove to show me the right way. I was never held back about the truth of Jesus. I accepted Christ as my personal savior at the age of five. And some might say, how do you know it was genuine? You were so young. My reply to this is, I just know. The joy of the Lord filled my heart that one night, and I was never the same. Growing up, I always attended Sunday school, Awana's vacation Bible school, and all that good Christian child stuff. All I knew was Jesus. And as I got older and into high school, I still attended church, I still went to youth group, and I still did all that Christian stuff regularly. But as I grew deeper into high school, I started to see what the world had to offer. Before, when I was younger, Jesus was the center of my vision. He was all I knew. But as my teenage years crept up on me, my vision of Jesus started to shift off into the side and started to fall in love with the world and less in love with my Savior. By the time I was in grade 12 and in my first year of college, Jesus was almost completely out of my life vision. I only called on him when I was in need. I treated him like a 911 call. I still believed in him, I still had faith in him, but you see, when I was in my mid years of high school, I thought I found a loophole in Christianity. I figured, hey, I'm saved. No one can take that away from me. I can do whatever I want, and I'll just ask for forgiveness the next day, and Jesus will forgive me. So that's exactly how I started to live my life. And by the time when I was almost done with college, my heart and soul were so desensitized and full of love for the world that I didn't care about anyone except myself. I did what I wanted, when I wanted, how I wanted. And at the end of the day, I would just simply pray a prayer. Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. And I did this day after day after day. I was abusing the gift of grace. Then one day, I had enough. I was fed up with this life I had been leaving, lead, living. I missed the joy of the Lord that was once in my heart when I was younger. Reality was setting in, and I realized that this wasn't the Christian life that I had signed up for. These weren't the life situations that I wanted to be living. So I got down on my knees that night, and I cried out to God. I asked for forgiveness of my sins, a legitimate cry for forgiveness this time. I asked God to literally change my life. I told him I was done with this repetitive sin, and I wanted to live for him and him alone. Those were huge words to declare. And the next morning, I woke up a changed man. All my problems, they weren't necessarily gone, but there was a new hope, a new sense of joy. The rebuilding had just begun. The process of rebuilding was not easy. It was hard to break years of habit and personality, but the Lord was faithful. As 2 Corinthians 5.17 states, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I was indeed a new creation from the inside out, from the way I thought to the way I spoke, even to the way I loved. It was completely different. Growing up, I was constantly asked, when are you going to get baptized? And my answer to that was, never. That worked out well, didn't it? <laughs> I said, never. I do not want to be baptized. I have as much as God as I need, and I'm happy with it. Sin had desensitized my heart so much, because I thought I was following Jesus, but really, I wasn't. I want to live for myself according to my comfort and my needs. But today, I can stand up here and tell you that Jesus Christ has changed my heart. 
The sin that I once loved is now the sin that I hate, and I would live a life with one purpose, to bring him fame. So yes, I desire to live for Jesus all the days of my life. But in the process of that thought, he told me something that cannot go without mention today. Luke 14, 33 states that you cannot be my disciple unless you give up everything that you own. And it would be ignorant of me to stand up here today and, uh, and say that Jesus Christ has changed my life and I live for Jesus, but not mention that it came at a cost. Because you see, there's a cost to following Jesus. And that cost is your life. It costs your life and everything in it. Your friends, your family, your house, your car, your time, your money, your job, your heart and your soul. It is no longer yours because it will cost you everything that you own to follow Jesus. But here's the real question. Would you consider everything a loss just so that you can know Christ more? Or do you just throw Jesus into the pile along with everything else that you care about in this world? Because Christianity, it was never meant to become a routine. It's not just something you do on a Sunday morning and then maybe on a Wednesday night Bible study. It is something you do every day, every minute, every second of your life. And God has given us talents, he's given us gifts, and he's told us to go out into this world and change it. He's told us to preach the gospel to all creation, love the world, and we're supposed to be world changers. We're world changers. And one day, we're all going to stand before the Lord. I will, you will, everyone will. What is he going to say to you? Will you get before the Lord and he says, well done. My good and faithful servant, you have done well with what I've entrusted you here on earth. You've obeyed my commands. Welcome home. Or are you going to get before the Lord? Matthew 7, verses 22 and 23. And you cry out, Lord, Lord. And then he looks at you and says, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who have lived as if there was no law. So I got to ask, what are you living for today? Who are you living for today? Because if it's not Jesus, then you are lost. And the only reason I'm saying this is because you can be like me. You can come to church your whole life, 18 years, and you can sit and learn about Jesus. You can hear about Jesus. You can play in the worship team. But in the end, never truly know Jesus. And that's what matters. So, with all due respect... Some of us need to wake up. Some of us need to snap out of this North American comfort Christianity mindset and to start following Jesus the way we ought to, the biblical way. Because there's no such thing as a part-time Christian. It's either you're all in or you're all out. It's either you're serious or you're not. It's either you're following Jesus or you're not. Because he's called us to live a life of repentance and to live obediently to his word. So maybe today's the day that he's calling you just to get serious about him. Maybe today's the day he's going to renew your seriousness about him. Maybe today's the day you just realized that I haven't been following Jesus, but I thought I have been. Well, guess what? Today's your day. And anyways, I hope I was able to encourage you with what had been brought to my heart. I want to be baptized today because I'm done with the old me. I am done fooling around, and I want to get serious about this mission he's called us to do. And although this testimony is coming out of my mouth, it's not about me. All the glory goes to God. This testimony is about his amazing grace, power and ability to change lives today. Thank you.